Swan, as you may have learned or know, are white. But how do we know what we know? And why do we never expect the unexpected? When you just arrive into the world of fighting games, there are tons of things you learn and eventually know. You know that you block certain moves high and other moves low. You know that if you finish blocking your opponent's attack or strengths, it has now become your turn, and you know that you can't block throws and instead have to take them. But what if suddenly, things you think you know for sure, unexpectedly turn out to not always be true? Swan are white. Or at least, that's what most of the world assumed until in the 17th century, a breed of black swan were discovered. Suddenly, the unimaginable became true. So there you are, playing fighting games, and all of a sudden your mid attacks go over a character that is in a ducking stance. You're playing Virtua Fighter, and suddenly there's a troll that you shouldn't tech the way the tutorial taught you. Or you are playing against a funny looking fish man, and whilst you're trying to block the bubble he shoots out, you get hit regardless. Congratulations, you have just found yourself a black swan. The fighting game world you thought you knew has just been flipped on its head and you either need to relearn what you thought you knew or have these exceptions to the norm wired deep into your brain. Knowledge checks are quite common in every fighting game. However, for beginners, being put into these situations that go against what they know and ought to be true can come off as quite a surprise. Many characters have at least one attack or two that need specific countering to play against. And even some entire character archetypes can be knowledge checks for beginners. For example, grapplers for learning how to keep them away and how to deal with their throws, or zoners for the exact opposite problem of learning how to approach. But there are characters that have multiple ways to test your knowledge or where this specific tool is so effective that they themselves become seen as knowledge checks. So what can we learn from playing as or against these characters? And what role do they play in fighting games? If you follow this channel for any amount of time, you may know I used to play a lot of Tekken but for various reasons fell out time and time again. My longest stint playing was when I picked up Negan, but I never detailed the reasons for picking him up. At the time I had never seen a single second of The Walking Dead, nor was I a huge Jeffrey Dean Morgan fan, no. Around the time of his release, an anime video game convention was coming up that also held a Tekken 7 tournament. I felt that if I wanted to have any shot in doing okay at this tournament, with only a month time to get back into it, I should pick a new character that everyone else still needed to learn as well. So I picked up Negan, eventually began to love his moveset and character, but the initial reason was quite vapid. Vapid though the reasoning may have been, in the month leading up to the convention, it proved to be true. My rusty fundamentals combined with playing a new character quickly brought me to ranks I had never achieved before. One of the big reasons for achieving this was my favorite tool in Negan's arsenal, his Down Forward 4-2. Down Forward 4-2 is an impressive tool a Negan player has. A mid-kick into a high bat swing. On hit, this leads to guaranteed extra damage from his Intimidation Stance 1-2. And on block, it can put Negan into Intimidation Stance, where he is plus and has plenty of options. He can go into a low, into a delayable string, a huge launcher, or, and most dangerous of all, his 1 plus 2 power crush move that is safe on block and leads to a full combo on hit. Select your heroes. This and many other things, like his other plus on block moves, led me to get better and better results online. Then the day of the convention and thus the tournament came. I took up my controller and started playing some friendlies. I sat next to someone playing Noctis and completely destroyed them, and some other players too. Eventually, just before the tournament started, I was playing against a Jin player who said, like me, to have just recently picked up the game again. He said he hadn't played against many or any Negans, and it showed. I won the first couple of games until he started completely beating my ass. This guy was way, way better than me. He quickly realized what moves were plus, what moves could be interrupted, and more specifically the fact that the second hit of my down forward 4 2 string could be ducked and heavily punished, and thus not having to deal with any of it at all. 
After this, the tournament kinda went as expected. I won the first two matches against people who didn't know what they were doing against Negan and lost the other two against way, way better players. I had learned my lesson in a beautiful way. In fighting games, no matter how strong an option may seem at first glance, there is always, always counterplay. Okay, maybe not against every character, <coughs> Makuma ST, <coughs> but you get the gist. At home, I quickly came up with ideas on what to do against this. I still use down forward 4 2, but now switch it up with down forward 4 3, which is a mid mid, and thus hits players that are trying to duck. Or, going for even bigger damage, I stopped after down forward 4 and then launched them whilst they were waiting to punish the follow up. Though hated by beginners, I think these characters offer a great service to these games. Getting completely demolished by a certain tool should always invoke the one to learn. How do I deal with this? How do I beat that? Etc. And while many newer players may not go out of the way to lab every little thing, having to deal with these new crushing characters will force them to do just that. And this may get them in the habit of labbing different things too. They might now look for better punishes or ways to interrupt things. So though there are many players who may argue that these characters don't play the real game, these characters that play around the confined general norms of what the real game is, do every game a great service. By encountering these black swan early on, a player might come to try to expect the unexpected, or at least prepare for it or lab against it once they have encountered it. To everyone on Twitter, Thank you so much for the overwhelming response to my question on this topic. It certainly helped in making this video. To the over 3000 people of you who have subscribed, a big thank you. It really helps in getting these videos out there to more people. And to you the viewer, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.